Hey everyone, Gene with Mahalo.com again. While I wouldn't do any lengthy animating inside Photoshop, Adobe does include some tools to create movement within our work. The animation panel can be used to create buttons on websites, avatars, form signatures, and many other simple works. So we open up the animation panel by going to the window menu and clicking on animation. Now you'll notice all the other panels in Photoshop open up on the right side of your screen, whereas the animation appears on the bottom. For this presentation, I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag it up to the top. Making a new animation is really simple. Uh, the first thing you need for an animation is you need a couple of different frames. Right now we only have one, so I'm just going to go down to the bottom of the animation toolbar here and click on new frame. Now, each one of these frames is actually an instance of this image that I have. So if I move anything around on the image in one of the frames, it's not going to move on the other one. We'll take this animated text here and just bring it down. And you can see, if I click back and forth between the frames, that it only affected one of the frames. Each one of the things that you're creating here is essentially a keyframe. In traditional animation, they'd have one artist create every, say, 5th, 10th, 20th frame, some sort of interval. These are all the frames that are going to be where the main changes are in the characters walking or whatever action is taking place on the screen. Then they take the animation and bring it to another studio where there'd be a ton of animators waiting, and they would fill in all of the frames that took place between each of the keyframes. So if I were animating this text and I were a keyframe animator, uh, I would have the first one here, and then maybe I'd have the second one down here. I'll create another keyframe and I'll bring it all the way down to the bottom. So now if we watch this animation by pressing the play button here, and you'll notice that we have all the, all the main controls you're going to need. Here's the rewind all the way. Here's move ahead one frame. Here's move back one frame. And here's play. If we press that play button, then you're going to notice the animated text changing between the three keyframes. And this animation is going to go on until we click the stop button because we have it set to play forever. So if I click the stop button right now, we can change forever to three times, once, or really any number of times that we'd like using the set loop count dialog. Set it to 23 and it'll play 23 times. And once it's reached the 23rd time, it'll stop playing. Photoshop has a bunch of animators built into it in this little button right here, which will tween the animation. Now that's basically short for in betweening. And again, if you take it back to classic animation, once your keyframe animator is done, he sends it to the other studio. They're called in betweeners. They do what's called in betweening. They're, they do what's called in betweening, which has since been shortened just to tweening. They're going to draw every frame from between the two keyframes. So, we're going to click on the tween frame button, and that'll bring up the dialog, the tween frame dialog. We can tween this with the first frame, the previous frame, or the selection. Um, if there were a frame behind this, if there were a frame four, we could also select next frame. In this case, previous frame is fine, and we're going to select all layers, position, opacity, and effects. We want everything to be tweened. You might as well just leave all of this set um, until you're doing some really complex animation and you only want to in between one thing at a time. So we're going to add five frames, hit OK, and that'll bring our total to eight. Now you're going to notice that there's a much smoother animation once we get to frame three all the way out to frame eight. If we do the same thing for frame two, click on the tween button, just hit OK because these are all the settings that we had previously. Now when we press play, all the animation is going to be nice and smooth because we have several frames animating from one to the next. So those are the basics of the animation panel. A couple of interesting features in the animation menu. Uh, the first thing is reverse frames. In order to show you this next part, I'm going to highlight all 13 frames, drag them down on top of the new frame button, and that's going to create this entire animation a second time behind the original 13 frames. But with these frames still highlighted, I'm going to come over here to the menu, drop down to reverse frames, and that'll reverse all the frames that I have highlighted. So the first one will be the last one, the last one will be the first one. And now when I press play, I'm going to switch this back to forever. Now when I press play, you're going to see the animation start at the top, go to the bottom, and since we've duplicated it and reversed it, it'll go back up to the top. So here's how it looks now. So those are the basics of the animation panel. Um, we're going to create a far more complex animation in a later tutorial. 
For now, please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and send any questions that you might have to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.